So hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Secrets of the Viz. This week is a special two-part episode with Nicole. Last week we did her Sci-Fi Data Plus TV Viz, and this week we're jumping into her I Am Viz special on Disney movies and Broadways. So over to you, Nicole, to give us a little bit of intro on how you arrived on the idea, because entertainment is such a big topic. And there's so many angles that you could have possibly take. Yeah, this one took me a little longer to come to. As you said, entertainment's very large. One of the first things I thought of was obviously Doctor Who, but I'm like, I've done that a few times, so let's try something different. Originally, was going to focus on either Data Plus movies or Data Plus TV, and I wanted to do this idea of like, how did it end? And so just looking at the final episodes of series, And I don't know what happened. Like I had a title and that was about it. So I decided like, you know what? I love Broadway. What can I do around Broadway? And that's when I was like, oh, I can do Broadway and movies and combine them and look at the movies and the musical versions and how they're different. I focused on Disney because I knew there was a few. So I could look at like consistencies across, but also my son is six now and he loves musicals too. And Disney is just kind of that perfect one to take a kid to. So we had just taken him to Aladdin and we were going to take him to Frozen. (laughs) (laughs) That's too. Funny fact, I recently brought my kids to Disney on Ice this year and it was a talent show that Mickey was doing. They had stars from the different stories coming out and they actually fleshed out the stories. So you have Moana, you had Kanto and obviously Frozen. It doesn't get old. (laughs) It was three fully fleshed out storyline so the kids loved it so much this year yeah oh that's awesome (laughs) would you consider disney on ice a musical as well i haven't gone to disney on ice oh really (laughs) i haven't no i think it's a great introduction they do have them here just for one reason or another we never made it um but i think from what i've seen like the ads and stuff it's a great way to introduce kids into musicals the more you can get it a little more interactive and a little less stoic the kids are gonna love it (laughs) yeah i think it's kind of like an e-between broadway and movies as well because skaters slash dancers are really good the acrobatic feats that they do are really impressive there's one that i think it was rapunzel she was curled out in the rope and she was just hanging there with just one leg and i was like man that's really impressive (laughs) yeah they are really good so I was looking at your Envis entry and there's this little tinkle bell at the top. I'm not throwing any shade or anything because there wasn't any mention of Peter Pan in your Viz. <laughs> but you chose Tinkle Bell as the mascot. Like what was the thought process behind it? I think part of it was just Tinkerbell is so synonymous with Disney, especially in the older Disney movies. I don't know if they still do it now, but in their like, you know, your VHS, they all start with Tinkerbell and the dust. Yes, you're right. Yeah, now I remember. No, I don't think they do it for the modern films anymore. Yeah, I don't don't remember seeing it, but they always did that. That was always meant you were watching a Disney. That makes sense. That makes little sense now. Yeah. And there actually is a Peter Pan musical. So I was like planning on including it, but it wasn't done by Disney. Like Disney did the movie, but Disney didn't produce the musical. So then I was like, oh, all right, then I guess we're not including that one. That's interesting. Peter Pan is one of the classics that you think that they would have had already one Broadway show or something. It was produced on Broadway before Disney had a theatrical production group. So it was before Disney, I think it's just called Disney Theatrical Productions. Yeah, I remember the first animated film was Snow White funny thing about Disney stories in general because I did some research when I was doing my masters and they all took reference from the Grimm brothers and really dark (laughs) storylines yes which I think a lot of folks don't know their backstory like Uh, it's so much darker in the original version yeah Sleeping Beauty was very traumatizing because the whole premise is about her pricking a finger and falling into a long slumber until the prince comes to save her. But in the original story, she also did fall into a long slumber, but then the king actually assaulted her during her sleep and mm-hmm. impregnated her. So also it was... Prince, right? Yeah. It's so dark. <laughs> like, how did 
Disney even decide <laughs> on adapting that to a kids friendly version. Yeah. They could have taken that story from somewhere else. Yeah, I didn't know about that one until I was older, but I was in middle school, I think, and I was like, oh, let's read about Little Mermaid because I loved that one so much. And that one's also fairly dark. <laughs> like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, but obviously I'm not going to tell my daughters about until they're older. <laughs> I don't want to no, scar them down. <laughs> memories of princesses and fairies and <laughs> godmothers and all. <laughs> yeah, maybe not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> cool. So maybe let's jump into your this uh, on how you decided the design, like the inspiration and the color schemes and all. Yeah, so I wanted to bring together that Disney and Broadway in the design. So the yellow background is the yellow that Playbill uses. And the Playbill is uh, the brochure that you get at pretty much any show that you go to. It's always going to have this bright yellow header, even local, like my high school productions had the bright yellow banner. So that's very indicative of theater and Broadway here in the States. And then you have the twice upon a story. So the twice is, you know, very much in that Disney cursive. And then the story is more in that marquee theater style. And as I was going through, the question is kind of, you know, why do I like the Broadway more than the original movies? I knew even from the start that music was going to be that main section because I absolutely love the songs that are new to the Broadway shows. So I decided to use music as my hover overs throughout it. That is a big part of the story. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. In the next section, you actually have this really cool vis, which is a color triangle overlapping a scatter plot. Like, how would you call this visualization? Because I couldn't find a name for this. There is a name, and I got the how to do it from Emily de Padua's Color Studies Iron Viz. Ternary plot. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> and it's that idea of all colors are red, green, blue. So where do the posters come in? And I used the courier font to mimic a ticket, if you will. I felt like I couldn't do a viz on Disney without the posters. That's so iconic of it. But I'm going to hit copyright. So we're going to pull the colors. Yeah. But this is interesting because I take a look on how this is done and it's done using map layers. How did you create that scatter plot within the color triangle? Yeah. As you said, it's map layers. So the first layer is make point when you pull the colors you're going to get the rgb the red green blue codes and the Fleurlidge twins have a blog on the math to make an xy point for each color based on its rgb codes and so then you can create an x coordinate and a y coordinate with just one formula so the entire thing is a map layer you've got the make points with the pure red, the pure green, the pure blue, and then using make line on top of that in order to connect them. That's a very interesting way of doing it because I'm recently also exploring the idea of doing like a color palette for all the Disney films. Uh, yeah, because I was very inspired by Lisa color palette of each of Van Gogh's self-portraits over the years. And I thought that mm-hmm. was really interesting. Oh, I can't wait to see your version on it with the Disney. <laughs> yeah, I need to find time. Sending the colors took a while, right? Because there's so many colors to it. As much as I could. There's too many colors. But I made the colors in the order that it came in, like, numeric order. Mm-hmm. So then I could just assign the palette to the coordinates. Okay, that's a very smart way of doing it. It doesn't work if you have too many. I had to do the movies pretty manually. But the Broadway one, I made custom palettes in the same numeric order, and then you can just hit assign. (laughs) Interesting. So in the next section, you have dumbbell charts with all the differences between the balance, popularity, energy, dance. This was really interesting because as I was looking at it, I realized that only Aladdin and Newsies had Mm -hmm. a lot of the matrix higher in the Broadway. For the rest of it, it's mostly movies that are dominating the Matrix, especially for Frozen. I think Frozen is a bit skewed because it happened (laughs) during COVID. So the popularity is off the roof compared to the rest of the (laughs) franchise. 
that popularity is probably just all let it go. Like, yes, it's just <laughs> let it go. <laughs> there's no other songs. <laughs> I've never heard of Newsies, but you did say that that's the only movie that flopped at the box office. That's probably why mm-hmm. I didn't hear heard of it before what's that movie about i have seen the broadway i haven't seen the movie it takes place in new york city back like when pulitzer and everyone was running newspapers Mm. and they had newsies which were kids who would sell the newspapers out on the streets and so it's a story about these kids who are from really poor families or they're orphans and they already barely make enough money as it is and what they have to do is they pay for the newspapers and then they get to keep the money that they make from selling them. So if they don't, if they buy too many, then they lose money even. They're like working and losing money. And the newspaper companies were like, how can we increase our profits? Oh, we'll give the newsies even less money. And so these kids all came together and basically started their own union and fight back against Mm -hmm. the newspaper corporations. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't keep treating us like this. We're going to fight back. Oh, that's interesting. It's very different from the usual Disney stories that they tell. It is, yeah. Was there any takeaway as you were kind of going through this entire analysis? I think the popularity didn't surprise me as much, but I really thought the Broadway would have higher energy than the movies just because they usually expand them. You're in a show, you've got a bigger orchestra. Well, you've got a live orchestra anyway, might not be bigger. And you typically have more dancing in it. So I really thought the energy would be higher than it was in the Broadway ones. Is there a favorite live action movie from Disney that you enjoyed in the past decade or something? I did really like Aladdin. I think with Aladdin, not to spoil, but how they enhanced Jasmine's story throughout that movie. I get that. that I, I love Aladdin as well. I think <clears throat> they really did justice to Jasmine's character. Like, it's so yeah. fleshed out in the movies. Her struggles with the patriarchy and everything. The animated version of Aladdin didn't have that. It was mostly about Jafar. But they flipped it in the movie, which is really nice. Yeah. I loved yeah. the cartoon when I was a kid. But after I watched the live action, I'm like, I like this one so much better. <laughs> so what's your kid's favorite Disney film? It used to be Frozen 2. Because I could stand Frozen 2 better than 1. So I just never showed him 1. But we're actually getting him more into the Star Wars Rebels. And then he wants to watch Skeleton Crew after that. Cars was the other one. All right. So thank you, Nicole, for spending time with us today to talk about your Iron Vis entry. Again, this is a magnificent piece on Disney. And I love how you put everything together. And there's so much story behind the differences between a Broadway and a movie in terms of the music, the balance, the dance, energy, and so on and so forth. I hope everyone learned something from this. And we'll see everyone at the next episode. Thank you. Thank you. I'm almost done with the ninth Doctor. I think I'm at like episode 10 or 11. The one that they basically turned the last sleeping into an egg and send her back to the planet. Yeah. I actually like that storyline quite a bit because it has parallels to one of my favorite Marvel storylines, which is the Skrull Invasion. So you have this alien species coming in and they are shapeshifters. They come in, they replace all the key political figures and all the celebrities and they've been around for like the 10, 20 years. And then they decided to do a massive invasion to take over Earth. So it's very similar. <laughs> That's awesome. You are, yeah, you are going through them quickly. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually watching them at 1.5 speed just to speed it up a little bit. But because they have subtitles, I can read them really quickly. I think the old episodes, the 2005 Ninth Doctor, the sequence are not too fast. So watching at 1.5 speed still doesn't change that much. Uh, but it helps to speed up a little bit <laughs> because I have a lot to catch up. <laughs> Yeah, I love Chris Eccleston, but I kept watching it because he was so good. The storylines and how it was filmed and everything, it could do, you could tell it was low budget. It was very low budget. <laughs> like with all the laser beams and everything, I was like, <laughs> okay. But then again, it was 2005, so a lot has changed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but Chris Eccleston, he, he was really good. He made me want to keep watching it. <laughs> It's very goofy. It's very different from like David Tennant. 
like I watched the specials with Dave Hamilton and it's like a whole different Doctor Who altogether. Yeah, it does that for every person, which is really interesting. So it's, yeah, it's because even within the specials, he was talking with Donna. Donna was shocked, like when you like a woman the previous time. So there's probably a lot of context behind the scene. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, Doctor Who is all about not watching it in regular orders and regular times. So. I mean, it's a time traveling series, so <laughs> you don't have to watch it in like a sequence that it was supposed to be, anyways. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs>